The general setting screen has information that's used throughout the entire site, such as the title, the tagline, email address, and date formatting that you'll usually need to enter once and then not change again. The site title is used to identify the site and is also used as the identifying name in syndication feeds like RSS feeds. And the tagline is the site's byline, which is a short phrase describing the site. These two lines are important since in most themes these two lines appear at the top of the website as part of the header and can even be used by search engines. They can be changed at any time without affecting the operation of the site. The WordPress address, URL, is the location of all the core WordPress programs. Make sure the complete URL, including the HTTP colon slash slash, appears as in the initial installation. If you installed WordPress in a subdirectory, then the URL should include that subdirectory as part of the complete address. For instance, if you install WordPress in the directory blog, then the complete address would have the slash blog at the end. The site address URL is typically the same address as the WordPress address. These can be different if you install the WordPress program files in its own separate directory, for instance slash blog, and you wanted to use the simple home page address without the slash blog, then this is where you give WordPress that information. For most installations, the WordPress address and the site address are the same. The email address is used by WordPress to send you notification and email alerts about the maintenance and administration of the site. When someone registers at your site, then WordPress will send a notification to this email address. Or, if you're moderating comments, then this email address will be sent a notification that a comment is being held for approval. The email address you entered here will not be displayed on the site. You can change this to any valid email address you want. The membership option is used to register users to your site. Membership grants different levels of access to your site content and even its operation. Checking the Anyone Can Register box allows anyone to register on your site. If you leave this unchecked, then you'll need to register users under the Users link on the Admin panel. Membership has five levels, each with increasing access to your site. A new member is initially entered at the default subscriber level, although you can change this default on the line below. Just below the Membership button are the five different membership levels. These levels determine what access each member has to your site. The higher the level, the more options available. Setting this line will determine the initial level each new user will have. The default is Subscriber. A subscriber has access to the dashboard screen and they can view and change options in their profiles under the Your Profiles and the Personal Options page. When a subscriber logs in, they have access to this screen. A contributor has the access of a subscriber plus permission to upload files and to write, edit, and manage their own post. A contributor cannot, however, publish a post. The posts are reviewed by the administrator who decides if the post is to be published. The contributor screen looks like this with access to the post screen. Authors have the access of the contributor but with the added benefit of publishing their own post without admin approval. They have access to post and publish functions as well as access to media files. Editors have all the access as authors, but they can moderate comments, manage categories and links, and edit pages from other authors' posts. Administrator has full access to all the functions and operation of the site. The time zone is where you set your local time clock in relation to the UTC or Coordinated Universal Time Standard, which is roughly equivalent to GMT or Greenwich Mean Time. These times are expressed in positive and negative offsets of the UTC. On the right is the current UTC time in a 24-hour clock. Simply convert your local time to a 24-hour time and add or subtract from the current UTC. Or you can choose a city in your local correct time zone. When you save the changes, then your local time will appear to the right of the UTC time. Date format is simply how you want the dates to appear on the site. This is usually done by the theme you have active. If you have a need for custom date formatting, then click the Custom button. By clicking on the Documentation on Date Formatting, you can get a definition of the various characters used in the custom formatting. Time format is how you want the timestamps to appear on your site. 
This is also usually done by the active theme. And this can also be customized to your needs. The time does not update automatically for daylight savings time. This will have to be done manually if you live in an area that uses daylight savings time. Week starts on is used if you display the WordPress calendar on your site. Set this to Wednesday and save changes and check the calendar then it is set to start on Wednesday. If it's set to Monday and save changes then the calendar starts on Monday. Remember to click the Save Changes button to activate any changes.